year we try to bring in an inspirational speaker, and this year it's Devin Harris, the captain of the Jamaican bobsled team. And I just love his uh, line is, is keep pushing. And I really think about our membership at this time in a very tough market. We need to have that kind of inspirational message that in our financial lives, in our personal lives, in our goals, to keep pushing and keep pursuing those dreams. You can imagine a bobsled team in Jamaica and what he went through. I'm just really excited to hear about what his message is all about today. You must always follow your dreams. You must always, always, always follow your dreams. And it doesn't matter how impossible they may seem, go after them, launch. Each of us has the ability to become that which we aspire to be. If you can dream it, you can be it. So that was kind of the environment that I grew up in as I embarked from Olympic Gardens to the Olympic Games in Calgary, Canada in 1988, Alberville, France in 1992, and Nagano, Japan in 1998. Now this is what I know. At some time or another, we all, we all will find ourselves in our version of, the Olympic, of our Olympic Gardens. Yeah, some of us were born into families that were uh, living on the wrong side of the tracks, but there are other persons who will lose their jobs, lose their homes, grapple with struggling businesses, find themselves in a dead-end career, you know, end up in a broken or dysfunctional relationship, struggle with you know, serious health issues, the list goes on. And the tendency in those situations is to ask, why? Why me? But I find that to be such a disempowering position from which to operate. The question you have to ask is, where do I go from here? What do I want? Because you see, the thing that keeps us stuck in our Olympic Gardens, not the enormous challenges. It's not the perceived lack of opportunities. It's not the lack of hope. It's not the despair. What keeps us stuck is the fact that amidst all the chaos and the, term and the turmoil, we don't take the time to find that one little spot, like my lamppost outside my gate, where we can look and we can get a sneak peek of the enormous opportunities that lies just outside our current realities. Too many people, far too many people, simply accept their lives as is. They foolishly believe that their past is an accurate predictor of their future. The thing is, as human beings, we have this amazing ability to see in our minds that it's the greatest endowment perhaps the Creator has given us. We can visualize the environment that we have not yet experienced. We can dream about a life we have not yet lived. And so that's what I was doing by my little lamppost. I was visualizing, I was dreaming, I was deciding what I wanted. What I wanted, one of the things I wanted was to be an officer in the Jamaica Defense Force. And would you believe it, 12 months after living in that shack, I moved up a little bit. This is new college. The general is here. He was actually my senior at Sandhurst. New college at the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Only the most prestigious officer training school in the world. So they say, Go as far as you can see. And when you get there, you'll see further. So from my vantage point, my lamppost, when I looked out beyond my current circumstances, the furthest I could see was the loftiness of the officer corps of the Jamaica Defense Force. And then I got there. I was 21 years old. And I'm th thinking to myself, wow, so now I'm here. What next? Then I remember, oh, yeah, the Olympics. So I recommitted myself to a decision I had made earlier to become an Olympic athlete. Now, I believed that I was going to be running 800 meters in the 1988 Olympics in Seoul. But Providence had different plans. And so two Americans who lived here, I think they were imbibing some of the more potent stars we have on the island. <laughs> who knows? I wasn't there, but, you know, they could have been enjoying some of the aromas we have as well, but that's another conversation. But they saw a push car, thought it looked like Bob selling except for the ice. <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> Approached the guys on the summer team to try and get them interested in this Bob said idea, and the response was, Bob, who? 
Man, we live in Jamaica. The only Bob we know is Bob Marley, and he's dead. No, thank you. So they came to the army looking for athletes. My colonel at the time, Alan Douglas, suggested that I tried out for the team. And I did. So three and a half years after living in that shack, I went from running on a gravel strewn dirt track to sprinting on ice, creating history. So this is what I want to tell you as individuals. This is what I want to say to us as a people. You do not have to stay in Olympic Gardens if you don't want to. Your biography is not your destiny. Your decisions are. time I look at this photo, I, I kind of smile to myself, because believe me, everything we're doing in that picture is wrong. <laughs> the way our hands are on the push bar, the, the position of the elbows, the back, everything is wrong. But I'm so grateful for that experience, because it has left me with a really important, really valuable life lessons. You see, most people wait until everything is perfect before they go pursue their dreams. And sure, there is something to be said about doing your research, something to be said about having proper plans, but you cannot hold your, your dreams hostage to perfection. So we got started, although we didn't have a perfect plan. We got started on our dreams. And it, that, that principle, I believe, holds for any dream you may have, whether it's finishing a college degree, losing weight, saving money, you name it, you have to get started. After three days of practice, pushing the seventh fastest start time in the Olympic Games. Now, if you put that in a movie, people go, that's corny. Makes no sense, but that's us. And then we did something that nobody else has done since. We crashed spectacularly in a way that, you know, when they were filming the movie, they tried to get some of the guys, uh, the stunt guys in Hollywood to recreate that scene, and they go, you don't mess with perfection. <laughs> so it, it didn't work. So that's us, uh, next slide. That's us there trying to exit stage left gracefully <laughs> after we had crashed. So I'm often asked, you know, so when you crashed, what were you thinking? Were you scared? Did you think you're gonna get injured? No, no. I was just embarrassed, because we had failed. When you finish a bobsled run on your head, <laughs> that's a failure. <laughs> and when you do it in front of the entire world, that's a massive failure, right? So we were really worried about going home. We felt like we had let down our country and we had embarrassed them. And People were going to ridicule us, but wow, it was further from the truth. We got home, people were so appreciative, they were so supportive. In fact, the government made stamps with our faces on it. I, she laughs, but it's true. <laughs> and this is the days before, you know, email and text messages and so on. So it gave, re a, you know, a new meaning to the term personal mail. You know, I, I get a letter and there's, a stamp, and that's my face in it. I'm going, wow, what a handsome devil. <laughs> now, as you go pursue those dreams, guess what? There will always be obstacles. There will always be setbacks. You will have some crashes sometimes. You're going to fail. What's important to remember is failure is an event. It's a result that you got from some action you took. Doesn't mean that you are a failure. So when you do fail, when you do crash, that's the first thing you have to remember. And then you have to find a way to pick yourself up, brush yourself off, re-examine your action, and start pushing forward.
in my sport of bobsledding, the race continues even after the winners have been declared. And despite this interesting fact, I have never seen one of the remaining teams go about their next run in a nonchalant manner. Now, you could easily make the argument that finishing the race is a mere formality. But each of these guys, whether they were in fourth place or last place, you know, they push and they race with the intensity and the ferocity of an athlete, a team that's within striking distance of winning the gold or setting a record. It doesn't matter where they are. They're always working hard and giving up their best, trying to get the best result. That's the habit that they have. And as Aristotle says, excellence is not an act. It's a habit. They get in the habit of working hard and producing the best results possible. Excellence is not perfection, by the way. It's a habit. It's doing everything in your power to achieve the best result, the highest quality possible, despite your talent, your abilities, and the resources you have at, your hand, at hand. Now, here's the thing. You cannot, in an instant, introduce yourself to the world as a person of excellence. You have to work at it. You have to start doing small things in a great way. You begin by being excellent at home, being excellent in the office, being excellent at your next event, by being excellent in how you respond to your spouse and your children and your colleagues and your clients. In 1989, the year I learned to drive Bob says, I'm in Innsbruck, Austria, nervous as hell, as, as usual, waiting to go down the track. And above the din of the warm house where we were, I heard someone who goes, my god, they have changed the start again. Yep, the East Germans. They only had you know, some of the best sleds, some of the best athletes, a fine athlete, bobsledding tradition. And they were changing the start again. They were not contented in all the successes they had in the past. They understood that for them to continue to succeed, they had to find a way to get better at what they did. And so they were changing the start. They changed the start, in fact, and now 95% of Bob's studying uses that start. Before the crash that was heard around the world, Tiger Woods was primarily known for that way of thinking as well. You may remember 1997 when he won the Masters, record 12 strokes. But his, he changed his, stroke, his swing twice. I mean, all the experts said there was no need. His swing was next to perfect. And I remember watching an interview with him on uh, CBS 60 Minutes with Ed Wallace. And he said, I wanted to get better. He wanted to get better. We all should want to get better at what we do. Now, as you, you head home, some of you may want to all at once implement everything you have learned here, all the strategies, all the technology, you want to implement it all at once. And that's admirable. But once again, might I suggest the ways of an Olympic athlete. They want to get better. And every now and again, they'll experience a, a spike in their performance. But for the most part, they know that progress comes from small improvements. It's what the Japanese call kaizen, improvement or change for the better. It's a philosophy. It's a way of living for continuous improvement, learning, and growth. It's an understanding that lasting success comes from incremental growth. It's not big jumps. It's not huge spikes. It's small, incremental, daily improvements that eventually does what? creates momentum, and creates lasting change. So in order to do that, obviously, we have to take consistent action, right? Here, here's the thing. There is nothing more awesome. There's nothing more fulfilling than knowing that we are expanding who we are, expanding 
your impact, expanding your influence, expanding your work, expanding how you feel and how you think. And that really comes, all of it comes from these small daily improvements every, every single day of our lives. So decide what you want. Take responsibility, 100% responsibility for your life. Get clear about your why. Believe that it's possible. Take action and keep on pushing. You've been awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Devin. Thank you so much. Just let us hear it again for Devin. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent.